Now there's no trick with a washer. When you're using scent lock and you're using a dryer, there is definitely a way to properly use a dryer. But with a washing machine, no. Basically you open it up, you fill it with water, and you use scent-free detergent. Now you have several options. You can go to a sporting goods store, you can support Dead Downwind, you can support whoever. Uh, Scent Shield, the uh, Hunter's Specialties. You know, there's quite a few companies in the hunting industry that offer detergents. Uh, Scent Lock might even do it. I know they used to. Um, but they don't make detergents. They buy them from somebody else, Palmolive or somebody else. So if you think these hunting companies own factories where they actually make soaps and detergents and shampoos, you're very, very wrong. They buy it from these manufacturers that have made it for years and years and have the infrastructure and the manufacturing capability of making it at an inexpensive cost because they sell so much volume of it. So if you notice here, free and clear, free and gentle, free and clear, all, Tide, Purex. I also use a lot, Arm & Hammer is probably my favorite. But all of these detergents here that say free and clear, that means they're free of perfumes and per free of dyes. So they're hypoallergenic detergents and they're actually made for people that have allergies. So they have, this stuff is totally scent free and it's absolutely no different than what you're gonna buy from Okay, there's a scent lock. Well, that's shampoo. <laughs> Here we go. That's Dead Down Wind laundry detergent. Scent lock used to make a detergent, and I have a bunch of it, but uh, it doesn't have bring any up. So, anyway. Here you got Dead Down Wind, those are laundry bombs. They also just make a liquid detergent, laundry detergent. And uh, you pay a lot of money for this stuff. And this, you know, you can get one of these. These are, let's see, 92 ounces, 75 ounces, 88 ounces. And on these, you're looking at probably five bucks. For 16 ounces, you get something that's, you know, a 16 ounce bottle of Dead Down Wind. Laundry detergent, you're probably going to pay 10 bucks for it. So you get about one fourth or one fifth the amount, and it's going to cost you twice as much for that one quarter or one fifth of the amount as opposed to buying it from a, a large manufacturer. So there you got Dead Down Wind, Tide, Purex, and all. And this is the same for everything. You look at soaps, that's Dove. I use Dove for everyday soaps. I think Dove makes an awesome soap. And they also make a sensitive skin for hypo people with allergies. It's a hypoallergenic. There's no perfumes and there's no dyes in it. So you're going to pay, if you go to a Walgreens or a CVS or a Rite Aid, uh, some sort of a pharmaceutical or grocery store, you're going to pay probably eight bucks for six bars of this. Eight dollars for six bars and this is premium soap. You're probably gonna pay for this Dead Down Wind Bar, uh, even if it doesn't have the travel case, it comes both ways with the travel case and without. Um, you're gonna probably pay five bucks for one. Five for one, eight for six, eight dollars for six. You, you choose your poison. When it comes to shampoos, same deal. Here is a Scent Lock Shampoo and Conditioner. There is a, another scent lock shampoo and conditioner. Here's a dead down winch body wash. There's another body soap right there. There's just lots and lots of different types of shampoos and body washes. And again, you're gonna pay a lot more for it. I don't have any generic body wash right here, but you can also get that at uh, Rite Aid, Walgreens, CVS and stuff like that. Deodorant's the same deal. Some of these are pretty old, but that's a Sunlock deodorant. 
This is a dead down wind deodorant. And you're probably going to pay five or six bucks for one of these. There's a dry idea. There's another dry idea. There's a speed stick. There's a secret. If you can read that, it says unscented. Unscented. Unscented, right there. Unscented. These are all unscented. Same deal. Hypoallergenic. Um, so you're getting, typically you're getting a bigger model. You're getting actually more in a put up because that's much bigger than that. And this is going to cost $2.34 for speed stick. Unscented, right there. $2.34. I guarantee you're going to pay five bucks for that or six. So this is less price. It's made by a manufacturer that actually probably makes this for these guys because they don't make that. They don't have a factory where they make this stuff. They buy it from big companies. So save yourself some money if you want or if you want to support the sporting goods trade. Uh, you know, go spend more money and get a, get a brand name that you trust because, you know, it, I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that stuff. It still will do the job. It's exactly the same as this, though. So if you're trying to save some money, look for hypoallergenic stuff in your pharmaceutical stores or your bit large grocery stores. It's going to be a lot cheaper. Just make sure it says unscented, no perfumes, no dyes. Hypoallergenic. Same deal with wipes. Scent-free wipes. I carry scent-free wipes with me all the time. I always have them in my car. I always have a Ziploc baggie of them in my backpack when I'm hunting. And you have lots of options. So I don't know if Scentlock still makes these or not, but there's a Scentlock field wipes. Here's Dead Down Wind field wipes. I've got some Primo's field wipes in my vehicle. And I got these because I was on Pro Staffs. So I did not buy this stuff. So, um... I'm just showing it because I'm showing the differences. These are other. These are dryer sheets. You know, you don't need dryer sheets for the first thing. If you are, if you're gonna wash your clothing in scent-free detergent, what I would suggest you do before you throw clothing in the dryer is I would wash a couple, two or three towels in scent-free detergent. And then I would run them through the dryer cycle, make sure there's no scented, you know, dryer sheets in there that your wife might have left in there. And uh, once those are done, then the dryer is going to be relatively clean. Then you wash your garments or whatever you're going to wear as far as your undergarments. You never wash scent lock. You do not wash scent lock clothing unless it's filthy, dirty, or bloody. And then you wash it in as little soap as possible. But anyway. Once you wash the towels, dry them, now the dryer's clean, uh, then you wash whatever you want to wash fabric-wise, undergarments, and then you throw them in the dryer, and now you've got a clean dryer, and then as soon as that stuff comes out of the dryer, I also put that in airtight containers. But that's going to be for next spring, the, the, big, the big portion of that. So it's, when it gets to these field wipes, again, I do the same thing. Pampers. Pampers or Huggies. Or if you go to most grocery stores, uh, will have their own brand. You know, best choice. Meyer has their own brand. Uh, but Pampers, and again, anytime you see that word sensitive, that means it's hypoallergenic. There's going to be no perfumes and there's going to be no dyes. It is going to be scent free. Because to put scent in stuff, they have to put perfumes in it. And if you have allergies, typically that's what you're allergic to, is the perfumes. So again, here's a brand new one. This one here, there's still some in here. Perfume free, right there. A lot cheaper. I think these were like $3.59 a piece. And there's 64 in here. The Huggies brand, I think there's 80 in a Huggies brand box. Uh, you're going to probably, for these, you're probably going to pay 10 bucks. And there's 20 in there. 20, you know, 20, some, some of them have 30. This Snell Lock one has 16. So... And again, they don't make these. These companies that are in the hunting industry do not make this stuff. They source it from somebody else like these big companies like Pampers or Huggies or whoever. 
So, and the ones in the grocery stores, if you get an off brand, they're also sourced from these bigger companies. They despec this stuff a little bit and bring it out at a little cheaper price, sell it to the stores at a cheaper price. So when you get Pampers and you get Huggies, you're getting a very premium wipe. It's gonna be a thicker fabric typically than the cheap ones. Um, it's just gonna be a little bit better. And usually the containers are a little bit nicer and they don't uh, dry out as fast. Um, and these, these work great. Um, you just pay a lot more for them per, per actual wipe. And I would always suggest anybody that's going to try and have a scent-free regimen, you really need to have, you know, scent-free wipes in your vehicle because before you slide back between your seats and put on or get out of your truck, you know, to go put on your scent lock and stuff, you've been driving, you know, you're touching stuff, wash your hands, wipe your hands off with that. Now you've got clean hands before you touch anything to put your clothing on and put your gloves on. And again, this scent free thing, people take this, people that don't know about it think it's a big deal. They, I mean, they think it's just too difficult to do. If you're detail oriented in the slightest manner, having a scent free regimen is very, very simple. I. 100% guarantee, I don't care who I'm hunting with, if we are wearing street clothes and I'm driving my van and they're driving whatever vehicle they're driving and we pull up to a hunting area and we're going to get out at the same time out of our vehicles to change, I have never hunted with anybody that I am not dressed and ready to go in the woods before they are. I am literally behind my seats change my clothes in two minutes. Two to three minutes, I am out of my vehicle. Most people have to stop their vehicles, get out of the truck, go to the back, open the tailgate, pull the totes out, stand on grass, put a mat down, whatever they do, which is a pain in the butt in the morning when it's dark. And it just takes them a long time because they got to do everything outside. I got everything nice and organized in the back. Everything's in totes. I sit in one spot. Everything is nice and handily easy, easy for me to get to. So having a scent free regimen is super simple. The hardest, the most difficult thing about having a scent free regimen is not when you're physically hunting, it's just preparing this stuff once it needs to be deabsorbed or all your garments need to be, undergarments need to be, you know, washed in scent free detergent because, you know, you've contaminated them a little bit and you feel like you've sweat. So um, the, the preparation, it's just like deer hunting. The biggest, the hard, the most work in deer hunting is scouting and prepping locations during postseason. To me, that's that's my labor. Come season, all I'm doing is hunting and taking advantage of all the labor I did in the spring, prepping locations or re-prepping locations, clearing out stuff. So, um, preparation in anything is, is where it's at, and it's not like or scent, having a scent control regimen is no different. Um, you know, your preparation is what makes it simple to once you are physically hunting to just get out of the vehicle, get dressed and go in the woods. This is a basic dryer. It's a Whirlpool. Um, this one has kind of probably a little more junk on it than most dryers do. Um, but whenever you're going to deabsorb your scent lock, your activated carbon garments, again, you do not wash them. Washing breaks down the glue that holds the two fabrics together that sandwiches the carbon. So you're not only getting liquid soap residue plugging up carbon pores, you're also breaking down the glue that sandwiches the carbon between the two layers of fabric. That's why you don't wash activated carbon unless it is physically dirty you can probably wash it five to possibly ten times during its life cycle without any harm but if you watch it much more than that you're definitely gonna mess things up gonna have a shorter sh shorter life so whenever you're deabsorbing reactivate is not the proper word you cannot reactivate a scent lock suit that is physically impossible because to reactivate it You'd have to put it under pressure, 1450 at 1450 degrees Fahrenheit or higher under pressure. That's how activated carbon is made. There's no way you're going to reactivate a scent lock suit. So the proper term is deabsorb. You're not getting rid of all the molecules in the activated carbon, uh, but you are getting rid of some of them. 
you're getting rid of quite a few of them. I mean, for hunting purposes, it's not that big of a deal. It's so porous. If you take, if you take one, one pound butter tub of activated coconut carbon, which is what Suntlock uses, and you took all the interior pores and exterior surface and tertiary pores, all the surface areas within the pores and the outside, and you flattened everything out and touched everything to each other on a flat surface, it'd cover over 100 acres. Think about that, 100 acres, one butter tub full. That's the porosity of activated carbon. So these people that say activated carbon doesn't work, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, one tablespoon of it, uh, if you did all the pours on one tablespoon of activated carbon, it covers about three and a half football fields. So on a dryer to deabsorb, what you do, you don't put it on normal. Obviously you don't do it on delicate because that's the lowest heat. Casual is the second highest heat. Normal is normal heat, heavy duty. I don't know what that means. You put it on time. If it's got a timer setting on it, put it on timer setting. And then typically when you hit power on a timer setting, you set the time. Anytime you put it on normal, casual, or delicate, it has its own timer system within the dryer. So on a time setting, you set the time. That's set at 60 minutes. So when I reactivate, or I'm sorry, when I deabsorb my scent lock, I put it in the dryer on the time cycle, which also gets hotter. That's going to be the hottest cycle because you, you can see right here. On my particular dryer, it shows that. Now watch this right here. This is your temperature. When I turn this to normal, it went to medium. When I turn it to casual, the heat goes to low. When I turn it to delicate, it goes to extra low. So when you turn it to the timer setting, you've got the highest heat it has. And typically on a household dryer, they will get to about 155 to 60 degrees. On a commercial dryer, like at a laundromat, you're gonna to get to possibly 175. So those work actually better than a household dryer on the highest heat you can get. So to deabsorb, 40 minutes, highest heat setting you have, which is gonna be your timer setting, and then you just hit, you just hit start. And to explain how deabsorption works, Heat makes molecules move more rapidly. It, it energizes molecules and they move more rapidly. Any place you see a concrete highway, you're gonna have expansion joints. Any place you see a steel building structure, you're gonna have expansion joints. I don't care if it's on a bridge or if you've got a steel building, you know, these high rises, they will have expansion joints in them because when it gets 80, 90 degrees, or 100 degrees, the molecules in the steel, everything has molecules in it. The molecules energize and they move more rapidly and it causes the steel to expand. It causes the concrete on the highways to expand because the molecules are moving more rapidly. And anytime you have expansion, you have to have an expansion joint or the highways would buckle and the steel and the bridges would bend and buckle. So the same exact technology and scientific application works on molecules in activated carbon. You've got mole body molecules that as they emit from your body, they get sucked into the pores of the activated carbon. And then what happens is when you throw it in the dryer, they actually bond to the sides or the pores of the activated carbon. There is, there is a, a bonding, scientific bonding uh, name for that. Uh, but anyway, when you throw it in the dryer, you're getting up to 145 to 55 degrees. So unlike the sun, you know, and having to have expansion joints on bridges and concrete highways at, all, at 80 or 90 degrees, you're getting almost double that amount of heat. So that's going to energize not only the activated carbon, it also energizes the molecules bonded to the interior. And Basically, what happens is as those start moving rapidly, they break that bond free and a good percentage of them exit out the dryer. Because not only do the molecules energize and start to move more rapidly, so does the activated carbon. Now, because it's been heated to such a high degree, it doesn't energize as much. The molecules energize a lot and move a lot more rapidly. But they both energize 
and a good percentage of the molecules break free from the activated carbon pores and exit out the dryer. So I guess the best way to put that would be it's like taking a sponge and if you stick a sponge underwater until it's totally saturated, which you're never going to do with sunblock, you're never going to totally saturate the pores of the activated carbon. There's way too many pores. But with a sponge, you get it soaked and it basically it won't hold any more water. Well, as soon as you squeeze the sponge, that's basically the way the carbon's working. You're, you're deabsorbing the sponge. You're getting rid of most of the water in the sponge. When you let go of the sponge, it's still damp. It's still got water in it, but you've gotten rid of a lot. Now you can stick it back under the water again and collect a lot more water again or wipe something up. So activated carbon, all of that stuff works exactly in the same way. Uh, heat energizes it um, just like it does steel, concrete, anything. I don't care what it is. So that is called deadsorption. Again, it's not reactivation. You cannot reactivate. That's physically impossible. That And reactivate means you're putting the carbon back to its pristine state. So you could basically take a scent lock suit and you could put it under pressure at 1450 degrees and when you take it out, basically all that's going to be there is the activated carbon. And it will be, then it will be totally reactivated. But all the fabric's going to be gone. But you will still have the carbon. So obviously you can't do that to a suit with fabric on it. Last thing I want to touch on scent control before, before this deer season because I'm not going to do anything else, I don't think. Uh, there's quite a few companies that sell these ozone machines, and I, I do not use ozone on my garments whatsoever. Never would. Uh, it leaves a foreign odor. Um, it will typically dissipate in time, but when you put it in an airtight tight container, it can't dissipate. So I'm not going to deabsorb my stuff, my undergarments, Definitely wouldn't use it on my sunlight, but I'm not going to deabsorb or not deabsorb, but uh, use ozone on my underlayers and then have them hold that ozone odor because I'm putting them in an airtight, airtight container as soon as I would take them out of the ozone machine. But I do use ozone in my van, my minivan. So it, just before each season, I'll empty my minivan out with from everything. I don't have anything in it, and I've got this scent lock ozone. And I'll turn that on and that I'll put that on for about three hours. And I think it has gaps. It runs a half hour, half hour off, half hour on, half hour off. And uh, that'll basically take all the odors out of my van. Now, when I turn this off and I get in my van the first time, it smells like ozone. It's a very obvious odor, but it dissipates relatively fast when you leave the windows open. So I have all the windows up when I physically use it, but then I, once I'm done, I'll roll windows down and kind of let it air out outside and that works really 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 well and there's a lot of companies that make these but this one here is by sunlock the last thing i want to kind of mention because it's coming on to season uh is merino wool um merino wool is very unique uh Merino, there's actually a merino sheep. It's a type of sheep and they're uh, typically raised in New Zealand and they what's unique about merino sheep is they're raised at 5,000 feet elevations and higher. So 5 to 10,000, 12,000 feet. So um, the unique thing about merino wool and merino sheep is they're raised in areas where there are no flies. Believe it or not, flies make a big, big difference. Regular sheep are raised at sea level to 2,000 feet. And when they poop and they lay in poop in the, in the yards or in the barns or whatever, um, they get poop on their, on their uh, fur, on their wool, and then flies, house flies, whatever kind of flies, you know, they're biting at it all the time because they're covered with flies in those areas. And they put barbs in the in the actual wool fibers. They literally put barbs like a fish hook in the fibers. So when they shear the sheep and they clean the wool, they blend all that wool together. 
you know, they don't take it off one spot where there's no poop on it and then do it different. They just blend all of it together. And that's why when you buy wool garments off, right, you know, regular wool, it pricks. If, it's, if you wear it against the skin, it pricks um, because of those barbs. Merino sheep are where there are no flies and therefore nothing ever bites their wool fibers and they don't have any barbs on their wool. And also merino wool is a little, fibers are a little bit different. They're a little curlier, they're a little smaller in diameter and merino wool is much better as an insulator than regular wool and merino wool is also much better at keeping you cool when it's hot because sheep in those elevations it can be you know, you get up to high elevation in the summer, it can be 95 degrees in the daytime. And then in the winter, you know, the higher you are in the winter, the colder it is. So, you know, it can be 10, 10 below zero in the winter. So their wool acts, it, their wool fibers are different than regular wool. So they keep you, it is a warmer, it's a warmer fiber and it's also a cooler fiber in the summer. So wool works both directions, but the, the unique thing about merino wool, it does not itch. Regular wool will itch you because it has barbs on it. That's a little tidbit of information I got because I used to rep represent uh, Icebreaker. Icebreaker is the largest merino wool manufacturer in the world. They make dresses, clothing, casual garments. Hands down, they're the best merino wool manufacturer on earth uh, as far as garments go. And they sell, you know, base garments i've got some 160s some 260s some 360s some 200 weights i've got a lot of different weights and obviously the the higher the number the the more merino wool there is in the garment and i've got merino underwear i mean and it's just like wearing nothing almost it's just so natural um but merino wool is awesome and uh, i am not a big scent lock base layer garment guy um you know what you have under your scent lock is basically irrelevant as long as you have scent lock on your exterior it's going to cover up for anything that's underneath it as far as odor goes you can get out of work go out and put on your scent lock suit and you're going to be fine even if you didn't take a shower lots of times in the mornings i don't take showers before i go hunting my scent lock protects me even though even if i do have some amount of body odor it's not a big deal because everybody has body odor whether you take a shower or not as soon as you get out of the shower and dry off, you're immediately emitting odors from your body, odor molecules. So, and that, that's one thing, that's something else that's really weird. You know, I've watched these TV guys and these guys that know nothing about scent control um, or on YouTube videos and, well, I wash my stuff and I hang it outside. Well, isn't that wonderful? You know what? You can take a hunting suit, if it's permeable and allows airflow through it, if you hang it outside for a hundred years and know it has zero odor, human odor on it whatsoever, if it's permeable, as soon as you put it on, your body is emitting odor molecules. As long as you're breathing, you are emitting odor, odor molecules. So within a certain period of time, you're going to start emitting odor molecules through that permeable fabric. That's what's the difference between an activated carbon liner in your suit. The, that actually absorbs and sucks in those molecules. That's why scent lock works so well. Um, washing stuff in scent-free detergent and having it as your exterior, that is not, you better pay attention to wind because you will have deer downwind of you, mature deer wind to you. And you know, when, when you go out of, out of state or you're on managed properties and stuff where nobody's shooting at deer till they're four years old. So, you know, these deer have grown up walking by hunters because they're not at the kill status yet. I'm, you know, managed for big buck properties like the TV guys hunt. Um, you know, they tolerate a lot of stuff. They tolerate human, a lot of human odor, way more than public land in the Northeast, and, you know, where you've got 30 to 40 hunters per square mile and they're targeting any antler deer. So, uh, you know, don't replicate what the TV guys do because they really, they get paid to endorse stuff, whether they believe in it or not. You know, they get paid a lot of money to endorse things and, uh, and that's typically what they do. So, um, pay attention to detail um, and good luck this fall. Well, thank you for watching another episode of Eberhard Outdoors, and if you liked it, please hit like and subscribe. Thank you.